Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another noisy episode of Photoshop User TV. My name is Mac Laskowski, and I'm joined today by Mr. Corey Barker. Hello. The man who holds up the magazine. We'll talk about that in just a second here. Um, and over, way over yonder, Pete Collins. Woo! Hey, guys. Hello. How's it going over there, Pete? It's going well. I, I'm, I'm in my spot. I like it. You feeling better this week? No, not really. <laughs> I may throw up right in the middle of this, and it'll be great. That's good. Hopefully, we can catch it on camera. Yes. He's still <laughs> ill a week later. All right. Hey, everybody. We are, uh, we're Photoshop User TV, and we are brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the fine people that bring you Photoshop User Magazine, the NAPP, and all things, all good things Photoshop. Everything good Photoshop. Speaking of good things Even Photoshop. Retro. Everything retro. Corey Barker, you have a tutorial. I do. And this week, I have 3D. I feel confident 3D because Scott's not here. No. With, um, with neon. It's actually, yeah, actually, this is uh, something I wanted to kind of show you that was part of the recent Creative Cloud update. If you have the Creative Cloud and you have Photoshop, definitely want to get this update, especially if you're playing with 3D, because they've added something to the 3D features that's very, very cool. What you have here, I've got uh, this text. It's actually on a background here. Now, if I just go on ahead and move this out here and rotate this entire object. You can see it's just the text in front of this 3D panel. That's not the cool part. However, I'm going to go and select the actual text object itself right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is here in the properties panel, I'm going to go to the cap setting right here and actually just take the strength setting and bring it up. Notice it kind of rounds the front face of that text. Now, I'm also going to have it doing it to the front and back of this text. So if I were to rotate this object, you can see that it's inflating the front and back of that text right there. That's pretty cool. So, but that's not the new thing. Here's the new thing. Are you ready? I am. I'm ready, Corey. <laughs> if you go and select the front, or let's actually, no, let's do the back face, because the back face of the text is what's facing that back um, wall back there. So I'm going to select in here the neon back inflation material. And you're going to go to Illumination and click on this little color swatch next to it. Now what I'm going to do is actually sample the green that's on that text. So I'm just going to, when this color picker comes up, move your cursor into the text and just sample that green color. And this is going to illuminate the, the um, objects around it. So I'm going to actually bring the intensity of that up a little bit. And you'll notice it changes here in the um, color picker. So when I click OK, we don't see any obvious change. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do that to the front face as well. So we'll just, again, click on illumination, sample the green, bring the intensity up a little bit, and there's that. So now I'm going to jump over to my lights in here in the 3D panel. And you can see I have the default infinite light, which has been applied to the object. I am going to go ahead and leave that on for now. But I'm going to go back over here to that front inflation and increase the shine and reflection. So it gives me a little bit of a glare on that text. Notice right there. You see that little glare? Shiny. Everybody see, everybody see the shine? I see the shine. I see, I see shine. shine. So now Just I'm going to light do, of mine. I'm actually going to go back to that light and turn off the shadow. That infinite light is shining that light on the 3D text and giving me that little bit of glare on there. I do not, however, want it to cast a shadow in the background. So here in the properties panel, just uncheck shadow. Shadow goes away. Now I'm going to do a render. Shift, Option, Command, R. And you'll notice it starts to get this little green glow in that mm. background of that text. Now, if you really want to see it, here's something you can do. I'm actually going to turn off that infinite light, and the scene's going to go dark for a moment. Notice the light, the text is still bright, and that's because of that illumination setting we've applied to it. But what I am going to do is go to that back inflation again on the neon text, back inflation material, and increase the intensity of that light even more. Now, when I do a render, it's going to illuminate that background giving you that cool neon mm. glow. This is something that wasn't in the previous uh, versions yeah. of this Creative, Creative Cloud update. You would only have lights that you would generate in that lights panel, and then it would uh, shine light on the object. Now you can actually tell a mesh surface to glow, and it will. Ref and you have to have other objects, of course, for it to you know, ah. reflect off of. But now you can actually have objects. What's, um, what's that little blue marching thing? That actually is the render 
grid. It used to be it's just this grid that would travel across your screen. Now it's just this kind of blue line that actually just kind of uh, indicates that you are currently rendering that effect right there. So it's called the blue marching thing. The blue marching render indicator. Of death. Of death. So what you're saying is before, all you could do is apply lights floating around whatever right. object you are. Now you can actually use the surface of whatever object right. you have yeah. as a light itself. Exactly. So whatever surface you have, you just apply that illumination. And it, when you do the render, you know, obviously you don't see it until you do the render. So don't apply the illumination and say, oh, oh no, it's not lighting my object. What happened to it? You do have to do that render. And again, that render, if you don't want to remember that long keyboard shortcut, it's um, Right under here, under the 3D menu, you just go to resume render right here, and there's that keyboard shortcut right that there. That might be a good keyboard shortcut to change, too. Yeah, absolutely. If you go into the edit menu, you can change. A lot of people don't know. You can change your, your Photoshop Very keyboard shortcuts. Very good point. Yes, absolutely. What is command R? Uh, you know what? That's actually a great keyboard shortcut to change. Because I, command R, here, I'm in Photoshop now. It just brings up the rulers. Yeah. Command R brings up rulers. Mm -hmm. You can see here, that's without and that's rulers. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know a whole lot of people that use the rulers. I use the rulers all the time. OK, so mm -hmm. Pete, don't change this keyboard shortcut. But I think I will, because I don't use them. But you, I mean, but that, you, know, you know what? Make, it the, make the rulers the complex one, and make render command R. Absolutely. Anyway, so. all right. Anyway, cool, Court. Cool. But again, that's a Creative Cloud thing. If you have Creative Cloud, go get that update, and you'll be able to do some really cool illuminated objects. So. All right, I got a very quick Lightroom tip for you. Okay. Uh, I get asked this question all the time on my, uh, my, my Lightroom seminar tour, mm -hmm. which by the way, if you're watching this, I'm going to Oklahoma on Oklahoma City, the 24th, 25th-ish, and then Austin the very next week, the very next Thursday, which is like the 30th. So Oklahoma City and Austin, if you're going to be in either of those two cities, uh, was Oklahoma on, on the 25th. Oklahoma City on the 25th and Austin on January 31st. So love for you to come out and join me. But anyway, um, I, I get asked this question all the time. So people love presets in Lightroom. Mm -hmm. They're over here in the left-hand side under the presets panel. And you can apply presets for, you know, th there's a ton. You know, black and white filter presets, and I click on it, and it turns the photo black and white. People love presets. What happens is a lot of people create presets for things like vignettes, where you come over here, you add a vignette to your photo. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a favorite camera calibration profile, like, like they like camera landscape or faithful or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they ask, you know, how, how do you apply that to your photos globally? Yeah. Um, one of the ways you could always do it after you import it, but one of the things that you can do is if you go into the file menu, when you go into the import dialog, if you're under apply during import, you can choose the develop preset there. Hmm. So maybe you have a preset that's a camera profile, and you know you're going to apply it to all your photos, like camera Let's landscape. Save some time, if yeah. they're all landscape photos, apply it then. Yeah. Uh, vignettes, if you know you're always going to add a vignette to your photos, then go ahead and apply the vignette as you do your import. Uh, you can apply it right there, and it gets to all the photos as they bring it as it brings it into Lightroom. So and of course I have a question. If you import all that and applies, let's say, a vignette, you can go back in there and just take off whatever vign the vignette of yeah. any photo you want. Absolutely. You you just go to the develop module and because it applied it, you would see your settings like that, and you say, ah, you know what, I want to add more, I can add more, I want to add less. Yeah, because if you have less. a photo that maybe is not yeah. quite, doesn't have quite enough vignette, you can no, go Nothing's ever permanent. Right. Any, any change you make you can always redo. So. Very cool. All right, hey guys, we got a uh, we got Pete coming up here with his tutorial, but first we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Sweet. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Kelby, president of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. Of course, we just call it the NAPP or just NAP for short, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about NAP and how for more than 15 years it's become the place where people go to get really good at Photoshop. Now one of the key benefits of joining NAP is that you get Photoshop User Magazine. It's a print-based magazine packed cover to cover with step-by-step -step tutorials, real-world articles, and feature stories from literally the very best Photoshop trainers in the world today. As the editor, it's my job to make certain that we teach you the most important techniques and the most requested features and that we do all of it in plain English, straight to the point, and we teach it in a way that makes it really stick. Each issue is pretty thick, so it's kind of like getting a Photoshop book mailed right to your door 10 times a year. As a NAP member, you also receive exclusive access to the NAP member training site. It's the largest and most complete Photoshop online training resource of its kind. You'll have access to thousands of online tutorials and complete start-to-finish Photoshop training classes from the best in the business. Also, 
brand new with your membership, now we have full-length online training classes on Photoshop. So you can learn 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter where you are in the world, from the world's very best instructors. We also have three different tech support help desks on Photoshop and Lightroom and on Gear, where you get your questions answered directly by our experts, one-on-one, -on -one, right when you need it. Another big benefit of being a NAT member is that you'll save money on everything from software purchases to Macintosh and PC hardware, from plugins to printing and everything in between, even stuff like hotels and rental cars. It's the power that comes with being part of an association with more than 70,000 members around the world. And because of our large membership, we've been able to negotiate special deals and discounts and special offers exclusively for our members. And we hear from members all the time that say, you know what, I saved so much on my first deal it paid for my entire membership. NAP also produces the Photoshop World Conference and Expo. It's the world's largest Photoshop event where members from all around the world come together for three days of amazing classes and networking taught by the best trainers on the planet. Best of all, NAP membership is incredibly affordable. For just $99 a year, you can have all of this and more. This is where people come to get really good at Photoshop and I'm inviting you to join me here at NAP right now and start learning today. Well, we hi everyone, we are back. Sorry, you were supposed to. <laughs> we're back. As you just saw, the uh, if you're a NAP member, of course, we now offer full length courses on the NAP website. You can actually go and learn pretty much everything about Photoshop. We're even going to be adding more courses to it as we go. And these are yeah. brand new courses just for you NAP members. So be yeah. sure to go ahead and check that out. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're a NAP member and you're watching this and you haven't been to the member website in a while, you gotta go. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a huge benefit Absolutely. that we added. It's got mm -hmm. like, there's already almost 20 courses. I think there is 20 courses yeah, on there. something like that. Um, and, and we're gonna be adding more. And, uh, in depth, take it from, we've got beginners classes. We did Lightroom for beginners. Photoshop for beginners for photographers, and photo and you did Photoshop for beginners designers, for designers, yeah. which mm -hmm. is going over great. Mm -hmm. uh, you did a type class that's going over type really, really well. Really, yeah, every, everything about about type in there just covered every aspect of it. Everything in the menus, the panels, everything you want to know after that course. Yeah, everything you need to know about type. Um, so when our goal is to help you with all those questions to, to train you, give you a path that you can go on. I'm a photographer, I wanna go in this direction. I'm a designer, I wanna go in that direction. So we're really trying to give you the tools so that you can be. Yeah, it's like a Photoshop curriculum. Right, you know, precisely. Start here with the beginner's course and then you, you kinda hone into whatever course you wanna go And, and if you're wondering, is there anything on 3D? Yes. There is. There is a class on 3D as well. So. And if you're wondering how much this costs you as an app member, Zero. As long as you're a NAP member, yes. it, it, it didn't do anything to the uh, to the NAP member price. So it's still ninety nine dollars, and uh, you get all that stuff. Speaking of really cheap things, <laughs> Pete, <laughs> I am cheap uh, as they come. What do you got, Pete? I can't be bought, but I can be rented. <laughs> hey guys, well. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a creative, esoteric kind of tutorial today. Well, I just esoteric. wanted to use the word esoteric. I don't even know if that's the right use of it, but I like the word. So, uh, over on Google Plus yesterday, I posted. Uh, I was playing around. I was, I've been sick, and so I wanted to take that time where I really didn't want to work on anything specific to just kind of play around. You know, sometimes you just want to let your mind do whatever it wants to do. And this was one of the images that I came up with at, at the end of that. And I challenged people to figure out, it all came from one image, where it came from, and, and what I did. And that's the final product, but that's the original product. And I didn't do anything special except for apply filters to it. Halftone. I'm sorry? Halftone? No, 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 no. Multiple yeah. filters, nice try. Well, and the whole thing is, is sometimes we forget, we get so specific about doing one certain thing, we forget to go in there and play. And that's kind of my, encouragement slash tutorial for today is there's so much you can do with any type of image just get in there and play let me show you what I did uh, and to be honest because I played I will not get the exact same image going back through it again it's <laughs> got does. it's got this creative kind of ooh, wow that looks kind of cool I'm gonna go in that direction and, and I hope y'all do this on a regular basis because it'll teach you more about the different filters but also what you can do in Photoshop Okay, so if you were here for the last uh, Photoshop user TV, what I did to start off with is I went to the field blur, and, and this alone is just fun to play with. I'm gonna crank up the blur, but then if I do the, the light bokeh, bokeh, <laughs> 
look, immediately I get this unique pattern. Yeah. Just because of what's happening is those circles, those bokeh circles are interacting and bouncing off of each other. Now I can adjust the light range and do all kinds of stuff there. I can add some color to it. Now according to what the background color is, is going to determine how much color is involved. But look, at, I can go from there, I can bring this along, and I can get all kinds of different patterns just by changing this. Look at me, slowly <coughs> moving the, the blur is giving me these unique bases for something. That's a cool filter. It, it really is, to be able to combine the blur with the, the bokeh. All right, so I think I stopped. I really kind of like that right there. So I said, okay, well, let's play with that. And so it takes a second to, to load it up. And once again, old school, I always make a copy just because I never know where I'm going to go with this. And I also want to have a background that I can go in and apply multiplied effects to it. So I'm going to take this new layer right here. And I'm just simply going to, first thing I always do is I make sure I have my move tool selected with V. And then I just do shift and plus to start moving through the different blending modes to see what kind of effects just blending the two images together might give me. And I can go forward and I can go back and I'm just scrolling through and look, you get exclusion, gives you some funky things like that. And to be honest, nothing absolutely jumped out at me. Multiply is okay, but so let's try something different. I came in and said, what, what if I try to select certain parts of this image and then do something unique? Come up to select, go to color range, and this is where the randomness kind of pops in. I just kind of grab a section. I just hit wherever I want on this selection right here and look at the different ways it's selecting stuff in there. I kind of like that's grabbed a big chunk. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to take that and pop that up on its own layer. So see, if I hide these, that's all that it's taken. It's given me this unique analog kind of selection. Well, so now, instead of doing everything, changing the blending mode, I can do the same thing as before by changing the blending mode of just that section. And it's going to give me a different look. Well, not too much right there. Well, how about if we take this and I go Command-Control-T and flip it horizontally? Let's try that again, flip horizontal. All right, so now we're getting this unique interaction here. And I'm going to scroll through. He was sick when he did this. <laughs> oh, I like that one. And then, oh, let's not forget, I can do things like, let's add a drop shadow, see if anything happens. No. Inner shadow, maybe. And let's really crank up the distance. Hmm. And I just start getting these textures that now I can compact these, these layers together, compact them, then start flipping them around again and doing some other stuff. I may find one section that I like and the other that I trash, and I'm just playing. And in no time at all, I come up with different things. This was, you know, I tried to, literally, I tried to recreate the one before, thinking of the steps I had done before, and because of the randomness of stuff, this was the next one I created, trying to create that one right there. And what I love about that is there's this total randomness and this surprise element yeah. to just playing. But look at these backgrounds that I'm able to, to just kind of generate on my own that I wouldn't be able to do any other way. And so that's my encouragement. Go in there and play and have some fun because you're going to maybe surprise yourself and come up with something that nobody else does. People go, ooh, how'd you make that? And they won't be able to copy you because you've done something bizarre that you nobody else would. <laughs> I don't no, even no. know how I did it. No, no, no. So it's a one of a kind. And uh, it's just cool. Yeah. And, I run into that often. I'll go in there and play with some filters and something just happens and you're just like, whoa. Well, and then know? you discover something. You're like, yeah. ooh, well, if I do that, that's mm -hmm. going to be cool. And that's really where you build a lot of your innate understanding of what's going on mm -hmm. is getting there and playing. Yeah. And, and so oftentimes we tend to be more engineer-like and want to have step one, step two, step three. But hopefully this is going to encourage you just get in there and play and make a mess. And for every cool one I've made, I've made five that look like crap, and I just trashed them and started over again. But I but, come up with some surprises. And oftentimes, if you have something in mind, an effect in mind you're looking for, just have an open mind of what is going on on your screen. You might discover something you didn't, you know, all, all too often I'll discover something. I'm just like, oh, that wasn't what I was after, but this is even cooler. I'm going to pursue this angle. 
So I mean, you really don't know. Yeah. So. Well, and the next step that I would do with this, and, and an I action. have started playing was, well, <laughs> recording action would be probably good, so I remembered what I did. <laughs> but uh, that's a great idea to record what's going on. But then I may take this, smash this down, and then go over to the filter gallery. How many times do I go over there and start adding filters, seeing mm -hmm. what happens, and then adding a second and a third filter because you get this whole chaos thing going on there? Yeah, absolutely. So, awesome. Well, hey, uh, we are going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we will have a couple of prizes to give away. See you back here in just a minute. Cool. Hey everybody, we are back here at Photoshop TV ready to finish up our show. Uh, we do have a couple of prizes to give away here. So first off, we have On One's Perfect Layers 2. We'll be giving that away. You also can win Scott's Photoshop CS6 book for digital photographers. And, uh, and here, let's do this. I gave away, uh, I talked about my uh, Lightroom seminar earlier. So uh -huh. um, Oklahoma City and Austin, my guess is it might be a little too late for Oklahoma City, but hey, it's always worth trying. If, it, if you see this in time, if you can make Oklahoma City or Austin, you can see the uh, dates and times over at KelbyTrainingLive.com. I will throw one of those into the contest prizes as well. Corey, where do they go? You get these fabulous prizes by going to KelbyTV.com slash contest. Go into the menu and choose Photoshop User TV. Enter your name, email, and enter a comment. Tell us what you liked about the show, what you'd like to see on the show in this new season. We've got a new year of cool stuff on the way, and we'd love to get your input. And we will choose the winner at random. Yeah, don't say, uh, tell us, to, by, it's Corey said, but by all means, tell us if you have any suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, don't say bad things about us, because that will automatically eliminate we, you from the prize. We, we cry. Except if it's about Pete, then it's, it's kind of okay. Yeah, we, but no, I'm just teasing. Uh, but yeah, if you do have any suggestions, please send them I'm going to go cry now. All right, Pete, very cool tutorial. I like that. I think that's a, I think that is great for you know, designers who are just trying to come up with different ideas. Perfect. Well, a lot of creativity is inspiration. And sometimes when I'm stuck, I'll just grab a random background image that I have and go throw it into a filter. Blur it, do that kind of stuff. I never even expected those things to bounce no, off right. each other and create new, yeah. new patterns. Nope. And that just opened up a whole door. To, I started pulling in more and more backgrounds saying, ooh, how does that react? One or, one or two simple textures can turn into a dozen different backgrounds, right. you know, even more so. so. Yeah. yeah, cool. Mr. Corey, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you to all, uh, to everybody out there for coming by and watching the show this week. Thanks to all of our sponsors for sponsoring the show. We will see you back here next week. Bye.